Hey everybody, I was playing around with the Unity navigation system, building this little number game for the kids, and I thought it might be interesting to share this with everybody because there's some new stuff in the navigation system that's pretty interesting, and it's really easy to solve a couple simple problems that you might be having if you're new to navigation in general. Now, if you're familiar with the nav system from before, then I'd still hang on if you haven't used anything new because there's a, at least one new really easy to use component that I think is worth hanging out for. So here I've got a simple setup, uh, setup, setup, that's the right word, where I've got two characters, number one and number two, and number two doesn't like going across the ice. I can click to move, and you see that number two stops. It says, no, 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 no. Number one's nice and happy. Number one and two can run back and forth across over here, but they just, again, number two just can't cross that ice. So this all uses the Unity navigation system. And to start using the Unity navigation system, you have to make sure that you pull in the navigation package. That's under Window, and then Package Manager, and then you'll see, let's see if I grab my window right here, there's an AI navigation package. I've searched for Navi, so it popped up. But if you don't search and you just pick Unity Registry here, you should be able to find AI navigation. You also see your assets here if you go to the My Assets tab or the In Project stuff if you want. This is in the latest version of Unity. If you haven't tried it, the new version of the package manager is pretty nice. Anyway, you pull in that AI navigation and it does have a package here with a bunch of examples showing how to do all kinds of the really cool advanced stuff everything from walking on walls to jumping off of things and all that cool stuff. But all we need for the basics is the nav mesh agent, the nav mesh surface, and one other new component that I'm gonna show you in a moment. So let's stop playing and let me show you how this all works. So in my scene, I have a whole bunch of ground visuals here. You can see that I've got this ground visuals root object and it has two nav mesh surfaces and you can kind of see the navigation mesh showing up right there. That's showing up because I have this show nav mesh checked on the AI navigation window. This pops up once you pack it, pull in that uh, nav mesh package or the AI package. So here I can see all of my nav meshes and I've actually got two of them so that I can control my characters differently. The first one is humanoid, which is the default agent type that you're gonna get when you set up the nav mesh system, you're gonna have humanoid and then you'll have to create a new agent type and you do that by clicking the drop down and then you go to open agent settings and you can create a new agent setting. You know, I said you, you'll you have to, you don't have to. You have to if you wanna make them be able to do different things, like one can walk across ice and one can't. So here you can see I've got humanoid for navigation sample, ogre for navigation sample. Those come with that package. So if you pull that in, you'll see those are part of that package that show how to go through different sized doors and all that stuff. And then I've got number two that hates ice. It's literally just a copy of humanoid. I think the settings are almost the same. Oh, it's got a slightly different step height. But other than that, it's just just the same. It's just essentially like a layer. You can think of it like a layer for navigation. So once I have both of those nav mesh surfaces added to the root object of all of my um, environment, and it doesn't have to be all the environment, but all of the environment that I want to be walkable or usable, then I just have to hit the bake button. If I hit clear, you can see I can clear out those two nav meshes. If I can hit bake on the humanoid one, you'll see I get a nav mesh that covers everything. And if I clear that and hit bake on the one for ones that hate ice, it gets everything except for that ice. So let's take a look for all the people who already know how to use the system and we're kind of curious at how that baking avoids that spot. And then we'll look at the code and see how the animation syncs up and how we actually do the movement. So this area in the middle is actually, I believe, row four, which has a nav mesh modifier component on it. This is a component that allows you to make everything, including all of the children. It doesn't have to be, including all the children, but make any object not navigable or alternatively make it navigable. So you can hit add or modify, or you can hit re choose remove. I've chosen remove, and here we're removing, oh, I guess I'll have the ogre on and the number two that hates ice. So that makes it not get baked in so that agent can't walk there. Let's go take a look at the agents because I don't think I showed those yet. On each of the characters, there's a nav mesh agent and they each have a agent type. One is set to humanoid. That's the default one that was already there, like I said. And two is set to number two that hates ice. The only other thing I've changed on these is the stopping distance I set to one so that they'll stop kind of far away from each other and not stack up because I didn't want to add in any extra logic. All right, let's take a look at how the code works. If you want to do something like this in your own game, 
you've got a first read input from the player so that you know where to move and then synchronize the movement or set, set up the movement and then synchronize the animation. So let's take a look at the click to move script that I've added on to here. This is a very simple script. It's very similar to the one that's built in, just slightly cleaned up, or the one that comes with the samples, I should say. So click to move needs a nav mesh agent, and in the start method, it grabs the nav mesh agent just by doing a quick get component call. And then in the update, we check to see if the player has pressed the left mouse button. That's what get mouse button down zero is. If they pressed it down this frame, then we do a ray cast into the game using camera main screen point to ray and passing in our input position. This can be optimized. It doesn't need to be right now, especially this next part here, the physics ray cast. So we do a ray cast with that ray into the world, figure out where we have clicked. And then we do a little bit here. I've done a little random offset so that we end up half a meter away. We do a circle half a meter away and then clear out the Y position and add that to the click point and set that as our destination. That will make the character move to that destination. That's literally all you need for that. And if I play the game and I do it without the other component enabled, if I go disable that nav mesh animation and I just have the click to move and the nav mesh agent script here, then watch what happens. You'll see that they move around. They just keep doing whatever animation they were doing. If everything works. I just can't get my synchronization. Oh, it looks like um, I moved my, oh, I didn't bake my nav mesh. You can see here I've got an error saying that this agent can't move because it's not on a nav mesh. That's number one right there. The reason for that is when I stopped playing a moment ago with the ground visuals, I didn't rebake the humanoid surface. So there was nowhere for him to go. See, when I clicked that, it just reappeared. Let's clear it and re-click it. It reappears. If I save now, it's just good to save, just in case you probably don't need to. Press play. Now number one should run across too, but again, they're not gonna play the animations. So there they go, they run across, no animation. So if I want them to synchronize the animations, how do I do that? Again, I added a simple script, keeping it very easy. Let's go enable it on both of them, and we'll open up that script. This nav mesh agent animation. It's not a built-in script. It's not an extension of one. It just followed the naming pattern that they had. All it does is get the agent and the animator in awake, which is probably where that other method should be caching things instead of start as well. And then we set the defeat boolean to true if we have an invalid or partial path. And we set the walk boolean to true if our velocity is greater than 0 0.1. And there's a simple animator in here. I'll show you really quickly that just does those transitions with these booleans going in, in and out of the different states. All right, this is a bit longer than I wanted to go, but I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in more of these tutorials, you wanna learn more about the navigation system specifically, let me know in the comments. And if you got requests for something else, uh, drop those in the comments as well. Also, if you're interested in RPG development and that kind of stuff, make sure you check out the multiplayer mastery course. We do nav mesh based nav mesh based um, character movement and combat and all of that stuff in the mastery course as well as networking and all of the other things that you would expect in a standard kind of top-down RPG game. It'd be a lot of fun and we're doing a well it's, it'd be lots of fun. Also just really quickly to clarify one thing on that for the mastery course you don't have to attend live. There are live sessions almost every other day where we go over questions and people bring their own projects, bring their own problems. And we talk about just about anything game dev related, about half of it ends up being related to lesson stuff. Half of it is other stuff that's somewhat unrelated, but still game dev stuff where people are stuck or having problems. And those are totally optional. You don't have to attend those to learn everything. They're just there so that everybody can learn more, get unstuck as quick as possible. If you are in the course and you get problems, have any questions at all while you're going through the coursework and stuff's coming out, just email me, let me know. Again, you don't have to attend live. I know there's a little misconception there, so I just wanted to clarify that. Anyway, thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.